Hi there, I'm Melissa from Speech Therapy Store, and today I'm going to show you how you can collect data using Google Forms. Let's get started. You'll come over here to New. If you don't see Google Forms already, you can hit the More, and then you'll have Google Forms. Okay, so this is how the form will look. When you hover over anything, you can it just it gives you a description of what each button does. So we're gonna start by titling our form. Let's just make up a make believe student here, Jimmy Smith, and we, this is going to be his IEP data collection. We'll just give it a little description. We'll say for school year 2020. 21. Okay, and then when you click on Untitled Form, it will then populate taking whatever you chose uh, for your title there. You can, of course, change it, but it does pull that through for ease of use. So the nice thing about using Google Forms is you only have to create it once, and then you can just continue to add your data in, and it will make graphs and make everything beautiful. You can share it with people, you can share it with the family, with the team. Great system for taking data. Okay, so first off, we're well, going to start by, you want to click the date, right? So it already populated, but what you can do is you can pull from over here, and you can pull date as one of the options. It will already populate with month, year, day. And then I select required because I don't want to forget to fill this part out, meaning I can't submit my answers until I've filled out this box at least. Um, it's a great feature to have also if someone else is helping you collect data and filling out the form for you. You, you know, really important when you're doing IEP data to be able to show, hey, on this day, they were able to do this or such and such. Okay, so then you can add another question by hitting this plus symbol. Okay, so then let's do some IP goals. I like to number them based on what how they are numbered on my goal page, so that way I can easily know what's what. So let's say they have a language goal, and the language goal is to answer WH questions. I like to include the criteria, so let's say they need to be at 80%. And then you can come over here, and this is how you choose how you want the data to be collected for this particular question. So let's say a linear scale. Let's say I want them to be able to answer 10 questions. Okay, so then if you add another question, it then populates. So then when you're collecting data on this question, you can then select how many they got out of 10 correct. Okay, let's see. The second goal, it's a vocab goal. And it is to do tier two words. Um, this semester, we want them to learn five new words. And let's say we don't want them to be random words. We're going to do check boxes. Let's say I have these five words that I need this kiddo to learn. And I want to be able to point to which word they know and which words they don't know. Okay. So then, as you can see, when we collect data on this one, I will be able to mark which words they knew that day. Okay, let's say they have an article. So it's our initial sentences. And let's say I want them to be able to do it independently. 80%. Accuracy is the criteria I'm looking for. So I'm going to make this one a linear scale, let's say. 
I'm also not marking these as required because I don't take data on each goal every single day. Let's say they had a short session and we just did our tick one day. That way you can collect whatever data is appropriate for that day. Um, you know what? I want to know... I'm going to edit this one. I'm going to say I want to know out of 10. And then I'm also going to come, I want to know what they can do. I'm going to duplicate this form. I also want to know what can they do if I was to get them that verbal prompt, you know, stick your tongue up or how, whatever prompt I'm giving them. And then maybe in addition, I'll duplicate that and I'll say, what were they able to do if I gave them, let's say, a visual view. So let's, maybe I had a picture and I could point to the tongue or um, we watched a video of what to do with their tongue tip. So they saw it visually, let's say. And then one more time, let's say, you know, they, what were they not able to do based on that? So I'll have these three data points for now, sorry. What were they doing independently? What were they doing with the verbal? So what kind of level of prompting did they need? Okay, let's say they have a fourth goal and it's another language one and it's students. Let's say the criteria is 75% and it's out of five. So I'm gonna do another linear scale. It's at five already, perfect. Then their last goal is the social skills goal. Let's say they need to greet two familiar peers per day. And let's say I wanted at 85% for the criteria. Let's say that they can greet two familiar peers independently. Let's say they greet one. And then let's say they did, they greeted the other one. With a verbal prompt. Okay. And let's say they were able to greet one familiar here independently. And they didn't do the other one. And then let's say they could do it. Um, but they needed to be given a verbal prompt to do it the entire time. They never could just do it on their own. Maybe I'll add more. Let's say they just did one independently and they didn't do anything else. Okay. You can also add an other. So that way when you're given this form at a later date, there will be a blank. So let's say you want to keep that blank there so you can add anything. Like, let's say they greeted um, a non-familiar peer where it's like, whoa, they just went up to someone and they greeted them. Like, they don't even know them. Like, how amazing is that? And you want to take note of it. You can have that other there, and then that other allows you to type in anything that you want in that space. So let's just keep it like that for now. Let's say this is our form, okay? Now we can send it through an email or through, we can use a link. Um, let's say, let's link, let's shorten this URL. So click shorten URL, that was too long. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this URL. Now I'm going to open a new page. I'm just gonna paste it in there.
Okay, so now this is the form, and at, you can see at the bottom now it has a submit. So this is the fillable, give me your data form. So a lot of people like to take their data on paper and pencil. That's great, that's awesome. Then you can just plug and go in here, and then you'll have all this data to look at. So let's just run through to show you. Let's say last week on Monday, this is the data that you got. Um, so for WH questions, they got six out of 10. They knew those two words, but they didn't know any of their other words. Let's say they could do five independently. They were able to do three more. They got one with the visual cue and then one they didn't get at all. So if you notice here, that adds up to 10. So if you don't like to take it this way, it's okay. But I really like to see like, okay, they can do it. They just need extra support or help. So they did five independently. They got three with the verbal prompt, one with the visual cue, and then they didn't get one at all. So that equals 10. Then language, let's say synonyms. They are all right, they got three of them. And then let's say they greeted two familiar peers, but they needed, the, they needed the verbal prompt this round. Okay, so let's submit it. Okay, let's submit another response. So we took, let's say last Tuesday, they did a little bit better on their WH. Then you relax again, and then they got these two, but they missed follow. Okay, let's say they got three independently. They got three with a prompt, two with the visual. So we're at three, six, seven, eight. Let's say they got two incorrect. Um, they did good today with the synonyms. They got four. And then they did one independently, and then they need the verbal prompt for the other. Okay, let's do one more. Last Wednesday. Okay, we didn't get to WH questions that day. We didn't have time. We also didn't do the vocabulary, but we did articulation. They got four. And they missed one altogether. Okay, they got all the synonyms today. And then let's say other, let's say they refused, um, given two verbal prompts. They just weren't having it. <laughs> okay, then you can go back into your Google Drive on your form, and as you can see, now there's this little three. So click on over to responses. It show you, shows you the days that you collected data. So, as you can see here, out of two tries, one time they got six, one time they got eight. Oh, look, they're doing really good on this word, relax. They got it 100% of the time. Um, they're really struggling with this word. Maybe we should focus on that one a little bit more. Independently, so they're doing about 33% of the time. The verbal prompts, they, they can do it pretty good with the verbal prompts. Okay, the visual cue is helping somewhat, and then sometimes we just, we don't have it at all. Okay, synonyms. So, they're doing okay. Um, let's see. So we're not quite at the independent level yet. Um, we need to continue to give those verbal prompts. 
Oh, and then look, the one time they even refused completely to even to even do it. That's, that's good to know, good to share. Um, and then you can always, let's say you have the annual IEP, and let's say they were rocking the WH questions, and now you want to get rid of that question. You can go ahead and delete it, edit it. It's all right here. So here's how to delete. Um, let's say you add another goal, you could add another goal. Um, and then all these are rearrangeable. So if you hold these little bars, let's say you wanted to move the visual cue up one, you could. So there, you can rearrange them as you wish throughout. And then when you're on, like let's say for this one, you can also change these around. So let's say you're like, oh, I want the independent to be at the bottom versus at the top. You want it to be rearranged, the level of prompting. So you could do that as well. Um, and then as you can see, the responses again. And then you can change the theme or the colors. Let's say I'm not really into the purple. Let's do the blue. So now every, every form, as you can see, I like that better. So now we have a blue, blue form. Okay. You have this more. You can make a copy. Let's say you have another student with very similar goals, um, or you like to only keep data for half a semester, then you could make a copy and say this is for semester one and this is for semester two data. You can add collaborators. So if you have an SLPA or someone helping you collect data, you can do that. Um, so yeah, I hope you found this video to be helpful and let me know if you have any questions.